Number 83. The hydraulic system of a backhoe is used to lift a load as shown in figure 11.44. Letter A. Calculate the force uh, the slave cylinder must exert to support the 400 kilogram load and the 150 kilogram brace and shovel. All right, so basically the picture's up here, but what I've done is I've just taken it and kind of redrawn it uh, a little bit. Uh, tried to make it a little neater. So here's the axis up at the top. We have the force that the slave cylinder is exerting. That force is acting at a certain distance relative to the axis of rotation. Um, we also have the weight of the, what did it say, the brace and the shovel. That's their, we're just calling that the weight of the arm. And that's located 1.1 meters away from the axis of rotation at an angle. And that force is acting at an angle of 30 degrees relative to the black lever arm. And same thing, we have the load weight, and that's located to 1.7 meters away, and here is the weight of it. So if you note, right, it doesn't say that this thing is in static equilibrium or anything like that, right? It, it doesn't say that. Um, but we have to assume that that's the case. Uh, why? Because, well, if this thing has a certain, you know, angular acceleration, what is it? I have no idea. It doesn't say. Right. So we have to assume the simplest set of assumptions. So therefore, it would be that it's in equilibrium. And we're just going to we once we come to that conclusion, we know that the sum of the torques in this problem have to equal zero. Why am I dealing with torque? Because that's the nature of what's going on here. Right. You have forces acting at distances relative to an axis of rotation that that's torque. That's torque. All right. Now. Uh, we can think about the sign. Let's think about the signs of the torque here. All right. Remember counterclockwise torques or forces that produce counterclockwise rotations are, ne are positive forces that produce clockwise rotations are negative. So this force, if it were to act on the black lever arm would cause the black lever arm to rotate in the counterclockwise direction. Therefore, I'm going to consider this a positive torque. So the torque produced by the slave cylinder will be positive. And these, as you can see, these would both rotate it then clockwise, so they're going to be negative. So minus the torque due to the arm, minus the torque due to the uh, load, and that will all equal zero. Solving for the torque, you know, produced by the slave cylinder, we simply get that the torque of the arm plus the torque of the load will equal that torque of the slave cylinder. Now we can expand, right? So we want to find the force, and the force is hidden within the torque. I hope you remember that torque formula, right? It's going to be force multiplied then by the lever arm length, okay? And then multiplied by the angle, the sine of the angle in which the force vector makes with the lever arm, okay? So I'm just gonna expand on every term now. So this is gonna be the force then of the arm, multiply, which is just the weight of the arm. So let me just do the term weight, right? Weight of the arm multiplied by the lever arm of the arm, okay? Multiplied then by the sine of the angle between those two for the arm and then plus the, actually, you know what, instead of trailing off over here, I'm just gonna write it beneath, okay? So plus then the um, weight of the load plus the lever arm of the load, not plus, I think I said plus, times, right? The lever arm of the load times and the sine of the angle between the lever arm and the uh, load. So now, basically, what I'm going to do here, I think in one step, if you notice these two terms have a common sine of theta, so I can, just to save a little space, I can factor that on out. And I'm probably going to just start plugging in some values, all right? Actually, you know what I'm going to, no, let me not do that yet. So let me uh, let me first solve for the force. Yeah, actually, all right, let me write it out one more step. So force um, of the slave cylinder multiplied by the lever arm of the slave cylinder multiplied by the sine of the angle for that slave cylinder will equal then... Uh, sine, right? These both, these, if you notice in the picture, they're both going to be 30 degrees. So the sine of this angle here is going to be the same as that angle. They might say, well, where is that angle? Well, if you just extend this lever arm uh, line, you notice that this is also 30 degrees. All right. So these two values are the same. That's why I can pull out the common term. So I'm just going to say sine of the angle for the arm and the load. Okay. Multiplied now by then the weight of the arm times the perpendicular lever arm, not the perpendicular lever arm, but the lever arm for the arm, uh, plus then the weight of the load, right, times and the lever arm of the load. All right, so now I can just divide this on out, right? If I want to find the force of the slave cylinder, you just got to divide this term on out. So I'm going to do that in one step here. I'm just going to divide that side by now RS times sine of theta S. And if you also notice, so let me erase this now. 
right? Since I divided it out, I'll move this on over and voila, here's the formula. Okay, I'm just gonna reorganize this a little bit. Let's bring it over here, I'll box it in. And this would be the formula, okay? We can make also one other simplification. The angle here that the slave cylinder makes with respect to the lever arm is indeed uh, 90 degrees here, okay? So it doesn't say that anywhere, but I mean, if you look at the picture up here, uh, what, what else am I to assume? 88, right? I don't know. Um, so I have to, it, it looks 90 to me, and that's the one I'm going to assume. So we can basically, you know, right, sine of 90 is going to be what? One. So that just cancels, right? All right, so let's write out now the uh, values. All right, so here we have the force of the slave cylinder will be equal to the sine of that angle, right, 30 degrees for both of those uh, weights. Then multiplied now by the weight of the arm, which is 150 times 9.8. So this is 150 times 9.8. And then that's also multiplied by the lever arm length, and that's 1.1 meters. Plus now the weight of the load, so that's 400 times 9.8. Right, and then multiply that by that lever arm of 1.7. Close that in, and then divide this now all by the lever arm for the slave cylinder, which is 0.3. Okay, take out the calculator, and let's do some magic. So this is sine of 30, going to be multiplied now by, in terms of parentheses, 150 times 9.8 times 1.1, plus then 400 times 9.8 times 1.7, close those parentheses, and then divide it by now 0.3. And what do we get? Here we get now the force that that slave cylinder is exerting is now going to be 1.38 uh, times 10 to the fourth, times 10 raised to the fourth, and that is in terms of newtons, all right? So that's the force that the slave cylinder is exerting. All right, so that takes care of letter A. Let's try now letter B. <clears throat> So what do we got? So it says, what is the pressure in the hydraulic fluid uh, if the slave cylinder, right, if the slave cylinder is 2.5 centimeters in diameter? All right, so we're trying to find the pressure on a fluid. We're basically given the diameter, right, which could help us find the area. We know the force that's being applied. So essentially, we can use this formula, right, to calculate the pressure. All right, since they're asking for pressure, you're, you're thinking along these formulas. And you're thinking to the, then yourself, well, what do I know? What am I given? And we're, we just calculated force. They're basically telling us, telling us a diameter, which helps us, which helps us excuse me, find the uh, area. So we can use this formula. So pressure is equal to force divided by area. So the pressure here is going to be equal to the force divided then by pi r squared. And now we can just start plugging in the values, right? Here's the force we calculated. All right, I'm going to use the exact value when I'm calculating it. 1.38 times 10 to the fourth, but I'm going to write in the approximate answer here, divided then by pi times the radius. Here's the diameter. All right, so we got to take this thing divided by two, but also we need this in terms of meters. So simply move that decimal two places to the left. All right, so point, uh, zero, two, five, all over two, and square that whole result there. All right, uh, and let's see what we get now for the pressure. So it's going to be that exact answer divided now by, in parentheses, pi times another parenthesis, 0 0.025 over 2, and then square that and close the parentheses overall. And here we're going to get a value now of about 2.81, right? 2.81 times 10 raised to the 3, 6, 7 it looks like, right? Yeah, 7. 7, and this is in terms of Pascal. Why? Because I used all my standard units. So here is now the pressure of that, hydro, uh, of that hydraulic fluid. Now let us see. It says, it's asking now, what force would you have to exert on a lever with a mechanical advantage of five? Okay, Acting on a master cylinder, 0.8 centimeters in diameter to create this pressure. So the first thing is here, don't worry about this whole stuff about mechanical advantage and whatever, what force, blah, blah, blah. Let's first find this, this out, all right? So for letter C, let's, uh, let's ask the question, what force is the master cylinder applying? Okay, that's the first question. Now, if we remember back to right, uh, Pascal's principle before, 
we do remember that the pressure that the master cylinder exerts is equal to the pressure that the slave cylinder exerts. Okay, so I know already the pressure that the slave cylinder is exerting. So I do know the pressure that the ma that the master cylinder is also exerting. So if that were the question, it'd be easy to find. However, right, it's asking for the force. Okay, so let me expand on the pressure here. Let's write that this is the force acting on the master cylinder divided by the area of that master cylinder. That should equal the pressure um, of the slave cylinder. Okay, we're after this. So we want to move the area of the master cylinder on over. Right, so let me just do that in one step just so that we save some space. So we can just move that on over there. It's now that area is then multiplied by the pressure on the slave cylinder, right? And now I can basically just start plugging in my values, all right? So here, the force on the master cylinder, this is without any mechanical advantages, is going to be 2.81 times 10 to the seventh, times 10 to the seventh, this is a decimal in there, multiplied now by the area of that master cylinder. So it's pi r squared, right? Here they told us the diameter in centimeters. So two things, take this value, divide it by two, and then move that decimal two places to the left. So it looks like we should have a number of 0 0.008 all over two and square that result, okay? And then I need another parenthesis in there, but I'm running off the page. So the force in the master cylinder here should be equal to, take that exact answer, multiply it now by pi, then multiply it by in parentheses 0 0.008 all over two and square that. And we get a value here of now uh, 1,400 or so, right? 1,413. This is in Newtons. Now, this is not the answer to the exact question, but this is the answer to what's the force acting on the master cylinder, okay? Now, let's take a, let's take a look at them, what they're asking with this mechanical advantage. So when you apply, the force applied to the master cylinder must be 1,400 Newtons approximately. But now... You're not pushing, you know, here's here's the master cylinder, right? I mean, if you remember the pictures, right? Here's, we have like two cylinders here, right? Here's the master. Here's then the slave, right? When you push down on the master, the slave should pop up, okay? So that's why the pressures are equal. And we just realized that we got to push down on this master cylinder with a force of 1,400 newtons. But... We're not pushing, we're not directly above this trying to push it down. We have like a, a rod here, okay, that we're going to push, you know, down on or something along those lines. And it basically creates a torque, which we can create a mechanic, blah, 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 which we can create a mechanical advantage from. Now, I'm not going to get into too many formulas here. Let's just think about what it might mean, what mechanical advantage might mean. It basically means that you don't have to apply you physically, you don't have to apply your 1400 newtons of force, okay? There will be 1400 newtons of force applied to the master cylinder, but when you look at this lever arm, you're probably not going to be applying the 1400 newtons yourself or whatever is applying that force. You're going to apply a force five times less than the force necessary to cause this cylinder to go down. That's the whole point of mechanical advantage, right? Doesn't that kind of make intuitive sense? right? Mechanical advantage, meaning it's helping you out, right? There's a certain mechanical advantage of five. This is telling you how many times less of a force you'll have to exert. This is your mechanical advantage. So what I can do down here is simply take this value and then take this value and then divide it by five because that's the mechanical advantage, all right? And then we can find our answer. So just take that and divide it by five. So this works out to be in terms of sig figs, it's about 283 now. So this is going to be 283, 283 newtons. That is the final answer. This is the force that would be applied to a lever if you had a mechanical advantage of five. All right. So guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this video helped. Please remember to subscribe, help us out, and we'll see you in the next question. Take care.